how it's up guys so today we're going to continue our inventory system and i'm going to teach you how to store the inventory items okay so let's begin the first thing we're going to do is go to our inventory folder blueprints and over here we're going to right click go to blueprint class and select actor component we're going to call it ac inventory and open it up we can delete all of this compile save and now the first thing that we need is a place to store our items so here on variables we're going to create a new one and call it items this will be of type name and over here on variable type we're going to change this to map and the second type will be st inventory item so inventory item this one um, this means that we will have a list which is indexed by name and each item of the list will be an inventory item okay so this way we can uh, basically mimic uh, the same structure that data tables use okay now uh, next thing we're going to do is create a new function to give items to the player so over here on functions we're going to create a new one and call it give now this function will receive uh, an ID as an input, so ID, which will be a name. Then we're going to receive the quantity that we want to pick up. So quantity, this one, as an integer. And the next thing will be the drop item. In case this is an item dropped by the player, and this will be a ST inventory item. Now on the quantity, we're going to expand this and set the default value to minus one because we want to make this optional. So if the value is different than minus one, then we want to apply it. If not, we just leave it as it is. Now um, over here, we're going to grab a sequence because we want to do multiple things. And the first thing we're going to do is go to our inventory table and see if this item that we're trying to give to the player actually exists there. Okay. So here we're going to say get table row, this one. We're going to connect this over here. The data table will be the TT inventory that we created before. The row name, we can get this ID from here saying get ID to get the function inputs like this and now uh, if we don't find the item for example we just want to stop the uh, execution here okay so from here we can say return node and this way the sequence will not continue okay now over here we can add an output for example saying success and this will be a boolean and this way we know if the operation was successful or not so we can move this here and now the result of this um, item that we were trying to find we're going to save it into a local variable so here promote to local variable and we can call it item okay now um, we want to do the same thing we did on the pickups uh, so we want to check if the drop item is valid and apply it if it is okay so here we can say get drop item we can say break to get the values from the id we can say not equal and uh, we can click this and say hide and connect it to clean this up now here we can say select we can connect this over here and if the drop item is valid, uh, we can grab it and connect it to the true over here. And if it is not, then we're going to use the values from the data table. Okay, like this. Now we're going to move this here and connect the return value over there. <clears throat> um, now the next thing we're going to do over here is just apply the quantity if it's different from minus one so here uh we're going to say get quantity <clears throat> we're going to say not equal <clears throat> to 
minus one. And now we're going to say branch and that's it. <clears throat> so if the quantity is different from minus one, we're going to grab this item. We're going to say set members <clears throat> like this. And now we can click this. We can go over here and expose the quantity so that we can change its value. Okay. Now from here, we can say get quantity like this. And the last thing here is just grab this set variable and we're going to set this to the item. Okay. So that we can update its values. Now, um, <clears throat> next thing we're going to do here is check if the player has um, the item on the inventory and if it does we're just going to stack the values okay so over here we can move this uh, like this and we can comment this and say uh, check if item exists like this okay now um, over here we're going to grab the items we're going to say find and now we're going to get the ID that we're trying to find. So get ID. Now uh, from here, we're going to say branch, connect this over here. And if we did find the item, okay, we're going to break this values over here. We're going to grab the item variable that we created before. We're going to say break and on this two we're going to hide and connect it like this and we're going to expose only the quantity okay like this so uh over here we can just sum this values like this <clears throat> and now we can grab this uh ver value that we found and say set members to update the quantity connect this over here expose the quantity and connect it over there now to actually update this value on the list we need to um call a function to update it so we can grab the items we can say add and we can just connect this over here. Now this will be the item ID. So we can say get ID. And uh, now we can move this here. And we can connect the structure over here. Okay. So uh, this add function works both for updating the item and adding a new item because if the item already exists on this list with the same ID, the item will only be updated. There will not be added a new item. Okay. Now, uh, if we actually uh, found the item on our inventory, we just want to stop the sequence here. So we can say return nodes and we can return success uh, saying that we added the item. Okay. So here we can comment all of this and say, check if player has item like this, um, like this. Okay. Now, uh, the last thing we want to do on this sequence, we want to add a new pin. And if, uh, the item is valid and the player doesn't have the item, then it means that we are continuing the sequence over here. So uh, the last thing we're going to do is just add the item normally to the inventory. So we can grab the items like this, say add. Now we can connect this to the sequence and here it will be the item ID. So get ID and here it will be the item variable that we created. Okay. So like this and over here, we can say return nodes and check success to true. Okay. Now we can move this here. We can connect this and say add item to inventory. Okay. We can double click this and that's basically it. 
So uh, this way we can add the items to the inventory when we call this function, okay? Now, what we're going to do uh, now is add this inventory component to our character so that we can use this function, okay? So here we're going to go to contents, third person, blueprints, character. Um, over here on the components, we're going to add a new one and search for AC inventory this one as you can see the component shows up right here now we uh, uh created this pickup item function before which is here on interfaces right and now what we're going to do here is from the item that we are receiving over here we're going to pass that to our give function so that we can receive the item so we're going to move this over here we're going to grab the ac inventory we're going to say give to call the function that we just created. We can connect this over here. And now the ID will be the item ID that we receive from the function inputs. So get ID. This one. The quantity will be the same because we are not um, <clears throat> receiving a quantity from this function. So this will only be used, for example, on shops. If you want to specify a specific quantity for the player to receive, then you always have that option over here, okay? Now the drop item, we can say get drop item and also get it from the function inputs. So um, that's basically it. Now we can also connect this success over here and we have completed this part over here. So we should be able to receive the item on this items list, okay? But now we have no way to check if it is actually there. So we're going to go to the event graph on our character and we're just going to add a key to test out to see if the items are there. So here we can see um, the keyboard, keyboard, this one. And uh, now what we're going to do is grab the AC inventory. We're going to say uh, get items to get the items variable. Now we're going to say uh, values to get all the values on the list like this. And right here, we're going to say for each. So for each value of the list, we're going to receive its value over here. So here we can say break. As you can see, we have all the values we need uh, to, uh, you know, show up on the Y or apply some other logic. Everything is here. So here we can say print text, not string, this one, because this way can be uh, formatted. So here we can say format, format text, this one. We can connect this over there. And we can, for example, uh, here we can use variables directly on this text. So if I use this uh, characters over here and say um, name, as you can see, I've exposed a variable. Now, if I just add two dots over here and add another variable saying quantity, as you can see now, I have exposed two pins and I can connect the display name over here and then I can connect the quantity over there and I will be able to display that on the screen, okay? So uh, if we can compile and save now, we can uh, hit play and if we try to pick up the item, you can see that I've picked up the cube and if I press P to list all the items that I have, you will see that I have one cube, okay? Now, if I pick up this pistol and then I press P, you will see that I have one pistol and one cube, okay? So that's basically it, guys. This is how you can store your inventory items and how you can uh, list them. Uh, I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something with it. And don't forget to subscribe.